Okay, just a thought on um, something I've been thinking about. Um, so, as some of you may be aware, there are opposite temperaments. So, the sanguine and the melancholic are opposite temperaments. The choleric and the phlegmatic are opposite temperaments. So, I wanted to dive in a little bit to the melancholic and sanguine, the opposite temperaments. And just to give you a clear set of definitions. So, this is an explanation of the sanguine. So temperaments are all about your responses to external and internal stimuli. So a sanguine will have a quick response that is strong and the impression lasts a short amount of time. Okay, so that's a sanguine. And then if you look at the melancholic, as I arrange my props, it is the exact opposite. Um, so a melancholic will have a slow, weak response so they'll have a slow response, they will, I'm sorry, they'll have a weak response, they'll act slowly, they won't act at once, but this impression will last a long time. So they're literally the exact opposites of the sequence. And I was thinking about how this comes into play in conversations. And for instance, a melancholic, second prop, a melancholic likes to go deep, like a deep dive. And something that I've probably heard before, but it didn't resonate until I'm, I'm in the middle of a, a temperaments class, an online temper, temperaments class that is amazing. I'll put a link in the profile or in the comments. Um, but not only is the melancholic and the choleric, um, by the way, not only is, does the impression last a long time, but for the melancholic, it actually increases over time. The impression starts duller, so to speak, and then that impression actually has a tendency to increase over time. So um, that was a big aha for me. That is one of the reasons why if a melancholic doesn't keep it in check, they're very prone to grudges, right? Because the offense will, offense will not only, you know, stay long, but it'll actually grow, right? And so what are we, what are we watering in our souls? What are we, um, what are we allowing to live uh, melancholics, I challenge you that if you got some gunk in there to weed out, weed it out. So anyway, back to this. So the melancholic will be tempted to go deep, right? So maybe they're, <laughs> so M for melancholic, S for sanguine. Um, this is my attempt at water, and this is, this is not an iceberg, but it just, I don't know. The notion of the iceberg, I forget how much of the percentage of the iceberg is below the surface, below the surface versus above the surface, but it's like, you know, a lot. Um, but a melancholic might get very um, deep into one topic or train of thought or conversation or um, um, idealistic way of being, right? They, they are very focused on the ideas of things. And so they'll go take one and go deep, 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 deep. While a sanguine might pop around and be like, that's so pretty and that's so cool. And oh, did you see that one? It was like that one, but then look at this one and then look at this one. So they're gonna have these impressions that are um, many, but they won't be as deep. Um, and I'm not saying one is better than the other, but I'm just saying that they're so different. And so this might help you, for instance, if you are melancholic and your spouse is sanguine, or if you have a sanguine child and you're melancholic, you might, um, have a conflict in conversation because you might not realize that they're not with you um, as you go deep, 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 and they don't want to be with you. And it's not, it's just the way they're wired. Um, and I take that back. I mean, of course, people, you know, who love each other, they, they want to be there for each other, but their natural tendency isn't going to go like your natural tendency is. And this also reminds me of um, empathy. So I've spent a lot of time in my professional life uh, working in the field of empathy, communication skills, especially with uh, people in the medical profession, so either med students or physicians. And what they always tell the physicians is that, look, a patient is going to repeat something until they feel heard, right? And that's just human nature. It's not just in medicine. It is in our normal conversations, right? So we are going to repeat something until we feel heard. So the melancholic might really be like, you do not hear me, you do not get me. I'm gonna say it again and again, and I'm gonna let you know about this layer and this layer and this layer and this layer. So I think it's important to be aware of this dynamic um, because if you're not aware of it, it can lead to some major tension, especially if you're in a relationship where you have opposite temperaments. So I just wanted to bring that to light and hopefully it'll help 
someone out there. Um, and I hope you're having a great day and be gentle with yourself.